Hello there and welcome to um, episode 20 of Codebase Alpha. We've got a very special episode this evening. I've got a special guest, um, Mark Miller from DevExpress, who's going to um, be talking to us about Code Rush and showing us uh, how that uh, can improve our productivity. So without further ado, I will just switch over to our uh, pair programming screen and we'll join Mark. I can hear Mark, and welcome Excellent. to the stream. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Excited. That's it. Okay, so we're going to write some code. Yeah, let's write some code. Um, so, Mark, when I've uh, when I um, when I've watched your stream, I've, we've kind of watched um, over the past few months. Um, got really excited about Code Rush and went out and bought it. I think the um, the main reason I did. Was I'm not really I don't write any kind of WPF stuff, but uh, I saw you do some kind of these short commands. You've got templates to create a XAML, and I thought that's absolutely amazing. So, um, so I, I went out and bought it, um, but I'm really kind of scratching the surface of using it. I've used a few kind of templates, a few kind of um, shortcut commands, but um, there's such a lot involved when you actually install the. Uh, the, the the extension. I wonder if you could um, perhaps talk us through um, kind of a first installation and and what kind of quick uh, quick uh, wins we can get from the um, from the initial setup. Sure, I think that's a great question. Um, the first thing we're in Visual Studio 2019. Let me just observe that right now. And the reason I know that is I know Coderish is both installed because I've seen it, and uh, there's no Coderish menu up at the top. Visual Studio 2019 took all of the extension menus and moved them under the extensions menu. Um, I, I uh, have, uh, I guess I'll go on the record here on your show as saying that I have strong objections to this. Um, there is actually an extension extension um, <laughs> that's out there uh, that's uh, recently released, which I love. Uh, which is, uh, hold on a second, let me actually, I'll get a link to this. Uh, yeah, second uh, chat. Stick it. Can I put it in the uh, the Twitch chat, or do you want me to send it straight to yeah, you? Yeah, put it into Twitch chat. It'd be fine. Uh, actually, you might not be able to. Uh, Nightbot, by... oh, give it a go. See if Nightbot right. um, objects. I I just sent it. Oh, to okay. You. I'll I'll, pop. I'll give it to you because I'm I got a couple windows open here, and I'm like, wait, where's my Twitch window again? Um, but there's that's the um, this extension I love because it basically takes the code rush menu and puts it back up on top. Um, without me doing it, which would probably make some people in Microsoft angry if I did. Right. I was like, I, I sent them an email the other day asking, what exactly are the, my consequences if I hack around your, 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 you know, thing of putting the coders menu down in there? Um, I, by the way, uh, yeah, I, I work at DevExpress. I've been on the Coderish team uh, for a long time working with Coderish. I want to say for, for probably over 20 years. Right. Um, before before .NET, uh, I created CodeRush for um, for Delphi, um, but also I've been studying uh, and researching great design for uh, about twelve years, I think. And uh, and the, that part of my brain that's done all that research wants to you know spend about twenty minutes explaining why putting the CodeRush menu under the extensions menu is bad, um, but I'm 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 editing. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not able to edit the meta that explains that I'm editing, unfortunately. <laughs> so, but with that said, if you go into the Code Rush menu, which if you're in 2019 is in extensions, or it'll be just on the top menu if you're not, uh, and then you choose Setup Wizard. Okay, right yeah. Right there in the bottom half of the menu right there. Yeah. Um, this is a good thing to do if you're a first-time user of Code Rush. Each feature is explained to you visually. Um, each of the big choices, not each feature, but the big ones that are likely to give you uh, uh, quick quick gains or maybe be annoying or something like that. Right. Those kinds of things allow you to configure very quickly. So structural highlighting basically draws lines between the braces. Yeah, this is a fantastic uh, feature. I love this. Okay, you can click next and go to the next one. We'll We'll just kind of go through this one at a time. Numeric keypad bindings. If you've got a, a full-size keyboard yeah. and you're not using the numeric keys while you're coding, these are great. Uh, these are my favorite key bindings. I use these all the time. So I use zero to refactor. I use plus and minus to increase and decrease the 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 uh, selection by logical blocks. 
and I use enter to jump to symbol or the, the jump to menu if I want the smaller button to its left to bring up more choices, such as jumping to ancestor classes or descendant classes, inherited uh, implementations, that sort oh, of that's thing. The, so we, we need so, to look at that then, I guess. That's, a, that's <laughs> an interesting feature. I've not tried this numeric keypad bindings at all, so that'd be good. Well, well, if you have those, I would, I would if, if you have a keyboard that's got the numeric keys on the side and you don't use them while coding, I would recommend it because it's a great way to get access to commonly used features. And it, for me, it speeds up the rate at which I can write code and lowers my cognitive load. Yeah, see, I, I never, I okay. never use the, uh, the numeric keypad ever. So it's like having extra keys for me. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, then definitely use that. Uh, um, go ahead and click next. Okay. Uh, spell checker. I actually like this. Uh, I find that you know when when this this feature was actually not suggested by me. It was suggested by I think a customer, and we implemented it. And I was like, well, let's see. You know, I was a little wary that it might uh, have like a performance impact, or it might you know waste my time. But uh, I find in general it works really well. Um, it finds uh, it it finds uh, errors in spelling that are <laughs> often ones I wouldn't notice. If you watch my stream, and, Mark, um, you, you know I make terrible spelling errors. So I wish it would kind of fix all those as well. But it's good that it, you know, it, it, in kind of comments and in, um, in method names, it does spot all those. It's really good. Yeah, it is, it's nice. And it's pretty smart about uh, being able to you know, figure things out in terms of what should mm. be spelled, you know, what, what words to check. So I'm I'm actually pretty happy with the spell checker. I didn't ask for it, but uh, but I really it's a benefit. I like it. Uh, go ahead and click next. Uh, we'll take a look at the next one in here. Tab takes reference. I strongly recommend this. This is a huge navigational time time saver. Frequently you're on a you're on a reference to something and you want your you have a question about either its declaration or its next reference, something along those lines. Uh, if it's only got one reference. For example, you've got a declaration somewhere like a method and you've got one reference to it. You just started using it and maybe you have a question. So you know you've only got one. You know that if you hit that tab key, you're going to go right in to that declaration. It's a fast right. shortcut into, into jump to declaration. It's a replacement for that in that scenario. And if you've got a lot of references, you just tab through them or shift tab to go back. Um, it is, uh, yeah, it's a huge, huge feature. Uh, if your carrot's right at the beginning of the line and there's white space to the left, you'll just get a tab inserted. So you want to be inside the, the reference okay, you want right. to tab to if you're at the beginning of the line. But other than that, it's just a tab key away generally to answer your question. And when you think about it, so this actually may not be things that people think about, but you know, as, as a guy who focuses on UI, I think about it all the time. Hitting the tab key is like about five times easier than holding down a control key and hitting like F12 or something along those lines to do a jump to declaration. Um, the reason has to do with uh, the fact that I don't have any chords. So chords, ha uh, you know, uh, corded keys have a impose a temporal re uh, regulation for success. I have to hold the control key down before I hit the tab or whatever, the F12 key, or control and shift and then F12, whatever that's going to be, and then I have to release them afterwards, right? So we kind of do those things, but we don't really think about them, but it's part of the drudgery, the drudgery of writing code, yeah. right, is what it yeah. is. It is, it, is, we, it is physical motion, and it is, uh, it is uh, increase in cognitive load, which wears on you over time, right? And so if we can take those away, the wearing over time, you, you, the amount of time you can code with a fresh mind extends. So, so tab next reference is one of those features that definitely contributes to that, even though at first glance you might think, well, you're only saving me a keystroke or something like that. Really, it's once you start working at a, at a lower cognitive load, it's hard to go back, right? You don't want to go back. So I think this is a feature that a lot of people appreciate. So I've just noticed one thing on the kind of third paragraph down here. It says to return where you started, just press the escape key. So you could go, yeah. you could go off into several different files, just press escape, and you're back where you started. That's amazing. Right. Yeah, you absolutely can. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's nice. Yeah. Okay, next. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Visual Debugger. Yeah, I like this. The debug visualizer is a is a is a huge feature. I think it's very beneficial. Um, but it, it it does it it's it's not your standard debugging experience, right? As you step through the code. 
um, we will increase the height of the line to show you the values right underneath the expressions. So the cool thing about this is that you don't have to move your eyes down to a watch window. You don't even have, you don't even have to reach for the mouse to go bring up a watch window, right? Or a locals window. You can just look right there in the code as you're stepping through. So it's like having your, your, your watch window actually built into the um, into the ID and, and in, in 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 your eye line. It's yeah. That's really good. Yeah. yeah, and it also has it also has the ability to both kind of it it it's extends temporarily temporarily into the future, but also back into the past. So as you step through the code, you can see the, where the values changed on the lines above you, and you can also see, for example, in this example in the screenshot here, it's telling me that this is going to be false before I yeah. actually executed the line of yeah. code. So, and it de-emphasizes that return right there. You can see in the example there. Um, yeah, right there, it de-emphasizes that, indicating we're not going to hit that line of code, which is crazy useful if, like, say, for example, uh, I don't know if you've, this has ever happened to you, but this happened to me a couple of times where I'm on an if statement like this. I think I'm going in, and I hit F10, and all of a sudden I'm off screen yeah. on the else, which is, like, way off yeah. screen. Right. And I'm like, wait, what? And I have to go back and I've got like a 10, 20 second interruption, which could have been totally avoided had I known that I wasn't going to get there before I hit F10. And that's what's cool about this. So we'll definitely look at that. Let's hit next. Yeah. The smart semicolon. I love this as well. Um, it, if your carrot is inside parens, like in the example screenshot above there, you can just hit the semicolon. <laughs> and it moves the carrot outside and puts a semicolon right there for you if it needs one. Yeah. And if not, it just moves it out to the outside. So it's a fast way for to get from inside something and be deeply nested parens or brackets to get to the outside and finish. And way. how many times I know I've done this is to put the semicolon inside the brackets and then move on because I thought, well, I've put the semicolon in. This actually kind of mm. corrects that, that kind of error, doesn't it? That'll fix it. Yeah. You want this feature turned yep, on? Still. Turned on. This is a feature specifically it's for, for me. You. Yes, it's the the S and B yeah. feature. Yeah. Okay, then here we go. Then so one one key selection embedding. So I like this too, but up to you again. So the idea is that if I want to embed something in a try catch or a try finally, a try catch finally, or just some braces like in C sharp, I can select several lines of code, one or more for either the full line of code, a single line of code full from beginning to all the wow. way down to the next line, the beginning of the next line, or multiple lines of code. And then coders will figure out the logical block there and just hit the letter B, C, F, or T and and get the block around it. I, I use this uh, frequently. I use it a lot for, for braces. Like if I have an if statement with just a single line and I want to quickly turn it into a, 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 a braced, braces around that single line, I just select it. And uh, and and hit the letter. Yeah. B. How many times? Do, I mean, what I tend to do is I write the write the try catch, and then I have to kind of copy and cut and paste the code that goes into the try block manually. But this is just like yeah. you highlight it, press T. Right. Press now T. the downside to this is so what will happen though, Stu, is if you ever do a multi line selection and think to yourself, oh, I want to replace this whole all these lines with something that's going to start with the letter B, C, F, or T then you might be surprised to yeah. see it, <laughs> yeah. right? But I find that, like, never happens. It, it's never that I'm, for me at least, I'm never, usually when I have multiple lines selected, I'm going to either cut it to the clipboard, I guess potentially copy it or delete it or do an extract method or something else. I never generally replace multiple lines with something where I just start typing. So, um, so but that's the reason why we make it optional in case you might be the kind of person who does that. Yep, okay. but, that sounds really good. But there's potential a lot to, that you can save, if you even if you were the kind of person who did this, if you changed just a little bit, you could ultimately save some cognitive load uh, moving down to the future. You wouldn't have to cut and paste and you know move things around so much. So let's pop over so. to the chat before we move on. So um, welcome to um, Michael Jolly. Um, we've got uh, Matthew in chat. We've got uh, Pure Snabel in chat. Uh, Chris Jones as well. So welcome everyone. Um, welcome to this very special stream. We've got Mike, Mark Miller here who's uh, talking us through Code Rush. We only just started, so uh, we're looking at um, the quick setup screens. And I know that, um, that uh, most people will, um, will will perhaps not have seen Code Rush um, talked through in this manner. So hopefully everyone will kind of enjoy this uh, 
some slight departure for code base alpha stream. So sorry, Mark, we'll go to the next screen. Okay. So this is template. Code template ex yeah, code template expansion. Now there's two choices here. Well, there's two if you the coder's template engine is like this uh, it generally everybody agrees that this is like one of the standout features of code rush and i think one of the reasons it is is because a ton of thought and energy has been put into this engine um this engine is essentially was the core engine that we started when we when i started building code rush about 20 years right. ago um and and so as a result it has been refined and and the templates that we ship for c sharp and vb those templates have been in the product uh, since 2003. About, okay, yeah, right? so good pedigree. So yeah. We have, yeah, so we have been, you know, refining them. Um, as a result, though, uh, so so there's there's basically two good choices and one uh, disastrous choice here. Um, if you disable template expansion, which you can do, you there's lots of other features in CodeRush. You can do that. You are not going to get get the benefits of writing code quickly from CodeRush, which is um, uh, a lot of what it gives you through the templates, which I'll, I'll show you in a okay. little bit. So I'd strongly recommend one of the l last two. Um, I Personally, I use the bottom one, enable templates with a space bar. Um, enable templates with a space bar is faster than enabling with and lower cognitive load than, in, than firing the templates with the tab key. However, if you're new to templates and, and you also like really short variable names like C, or B, <laughs> those yeah. are the variable names you'd like to have, then you probably want to enable templates with the tab key. But if you are, uh, it, but if you're not that person, um, enabling templates with a space bar will give you a lower cognitive load, faster template triggering. And once you start getting the, your head wrapped around the engine behind that, you'll be, you'll be writing code uh, that much faster with that few, with fewer keystrokes. Um, and I think it's just more enjoyable. Okay, so, but, so, so uh, should, do, what do you recommend as a, someone who's new to it? So he says here, recommending the tab key for someone who's new to Code Rush. So. Right. So I think I'll select yeah, that. To, yeah, sure. If you're new, if you're new, let's use the tab key to fire okay. it up instead of the space bar. So, but you are going to miss one of the templates that I use all the time is the if template, right. where I type in if and I hit the space bar and it gives me the parens on either side. And you can also modify that to give you the braces too, if that's something you always want okay. to do. Um, you might be able to work around that even with doing the tab key, because there's a, we also support a secondary expansion key, which uh, you could set up as the space bar. Okay. So you could go in and, and intentionally do most, but you could also create some templates like for if space, where, you, where they all solve it for you. Also, there's also some other templates too, um, Actually, you know what, Stu? I'm gonna I want to override your okay. choice on this because I want to give you a taste of some of the benefits of the space bar, and then you can change it back if you want. Oh, to. I'm not. You can come. By I'm the, not one for the for good. single single character um, variable names unless okay. I'm just kind of making this messing around and trying something. So maybe that's the best thing to do. So um, what what right, so one thing see. about the code templates? How does how do they kind of when you when you're typing in the shortcut, you know, CC or whatever. Um, you get interaction right. with um, IntelliSense. So, what, mm -hmm. what's the story there? What do we do about that? Well, let's let's let me see what the problem is. Uh, what you're okay. seeing there, I think there may be an option in Visual Studio where we can stop it from triggering. Um, and then there may be ways if you don't want to stop it where you can just back okay. up, where you can just hit undo, um, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, oh yeah, we'll cover I forget that. Forget what the options are but I'll bring up the uh, Visual Studio options now and see what settings I've got and see how they differ from yours. Okay. Nightmare Vav, we'll thank you very much for the follow. Thank you very much indeed. Very much appreciated. Nightmare VAB is following! <laughs> Yay! I've got my new, uh, awesome. my new graphics for that and the new sound effects uh, for the follow. So uh, you saw sort of Alf the alien there and then my new sound, sound effects. So thank you for that. A bit x filey that one. Okay, so um, we're going to go with um, Spacebar and try that out. Uh, so let's hit next on here. Ah, markers. So uh, this is currently disabled. So this this sounds really interesting, but I I, I haven't investigated markers and, and beacons and things like that at all. So this is definitely something I'd like to um, to investigate more with you. Uh, yeah. So what? The setting I use uh, is the last one down here. It's like the most aggressive on here. Use markers and collect with escape even when there's a selection. 
um, because Visual Studio at, at some point in time added a feature that says, hey, if there's a selection and you press escape, we'll clear the selection for you. Right. Um, which which I was just like rolling my eyes on. I was like, w what is the value? I don't understand. I didn't get it. And it was really interfering with my productivity. So I, I basically added the last one in here. Well, again, we'll give you a taste. And if you don't like the way what's happening when you press escape, you can come back in here and, and just say, let's change it so I can only collect on alt plus end. But we have logic to see is there's something up. So like a window, if you hit escape, the window goes away. But if there's no window and you press escape and there are markers, we go and click Okay, those. sounds good. So I'll, we'll spend some time on markers a little okay. bit. Okay, next one then. IntelliRush. IntelliRush. Um, uh, I like it. Uh, it's in general pretty good. Visual Studio 2019 is also getting better, though, uh, in their IntelliSense. So um, up to you. IntelliRush offers the ability to filter. So you can quickly come in and say, I want to, if you're looking only for events, for example, right. or you want to even filter through the hierarchy. So you can essentially do a slice of the hierarchy. You can take, for example, in this screenshot, if you look at the uh, um, the list in the hierarchy, the control is right there at number four in the middle. You could say, I want to look only at control, or you could say, I want to look at control up to object or control down to form. Okay. So you could pick some number in there and do a shift key plus that number to include ancestors or control plus that number to include descendants instead, or just hit that number. And now all of a sudden you're looking only at events inside of control, right. for example. Okay. So that would be worth so, investigating a bit more then. Yeah. So you can you can choose to enable it or disable it. Also, these a lot of these have options on the toolbar. Right above you, right under the words snb.bot, there are some uh, – there's, there's the Code Rush toolbar right yeah. there. And so those are the options that are okay. there. What do we got next on here? I think that I think we might be at the end. Of the Final list. settings, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So you can you've essentially got the same settings at this point as I as as I do. So we are sharing those those settings right there. Okay. Um, with that said, hold on one second. I want to just start my IntelliSense uh, search on my side in the the options. Why don't you do this? Go into. Let's see. Wait, that's not what I wanted. I was thinking. Hmm. Well, I was going to say go into the, the options, but I'm not seeing what I was expecting in there. I think it's auto is what I got to search for. And there's like 20 features that have the word auto in them. <laughs> um, auto complete, maybe complete is what I want to look for. I'm not sure if this is something all languages. I'm going to have to look okay, it up. Okay, no problem. I'm going to look it up. All right. So we are in a live share session right now. We are. By the way, if you use live share and use code rush, you want to get the latest build or um, or get a build after the current version that uh, uh, on or after the version we have, which is 18.2.9. So it's going to be 18.3 or greater is going to have a fix for live share in it. Um, prior to that, live share, uh, Codrush has got issues with live share. They don't play as well together, and and they play well in this version apparently, according to the uh, testing that we have done so far. So um, we're feeling pretty good about that. Um, what would you like to do first on this? What would you like to play with first? Okay, so um, Stu? so uh, let's uh, let's look at some of the templating because that's um, that's you know the Codrush's okay. strength, I guess, or one of one of the main kind of features which. Uh, which uh, I started to use on stream. So, um, so for example, on this um, adventure player, um, we have a, an interface here. So let's uh, let's try the tab. So I just did a tab to adventure player. So we're now kind of going through all of the. Uh, right. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? And now, if you hit escape, you're going to jump back. Now I'm back to where I started where from. You started. So that's quite uh, quite. I'm <laughs> quite amazing. So that um, that uh, adventure player interface is defined over here, and um, what I want to do is define um, a uh, a new property, which will be a dictionary. So is there a sh kind of shortcut for them to be to create uh, a dictionary? Right. There is, and so um, before we do the dictionary, I want to show you the basics yeah, okay. yeah, of sure. property creation. Is yeah, that absolutely. Okay? You, Let's use just, use we'll, this we'll, to do it. Okay, I'll just do it. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll do it in the live share. Yeah, yeah. I'll just do it quickly, and we'll delete my code. So if I want to create a new property, I can use the letter P for property, and then follow it with the type, a shortcut for the type of what I want to create. Um, so let me do this too. I'm going to pop. Let me see if I can get this in the chat room, and let's see if it it rejects it or not. 
looks like I need to log in. And, oh, it gives me an Authy token. Really? You don't trust me? <laughs> I think because I'm in a different browser than I'm normally at. Okay, hold on. Let me type in my Authy token. See if it's going to let me post this. There's my Authy token. Guess who forgot to click remember this computer for 30 days? That was me. I always do that. And did it. And it just cleared it. I get, let me try one more time, see if I can put that out there. This is Code Rush Cheat Sheet. Oh, yeah, that's and in there, yeah. Showed up, excellent. I think because you're okay. a VIP, you're, you're able to uh, post the um, the links in there. Excellent. So if you go to that cheat sheet and you go to the second page of the cheat sheet, on that, in fact, if you can bring that up, yeah, it looks like you're doing that on the stream right now. Excellent. The second page of this cheat sheet, we've got we code rush template start at the bottom of the. Just, page I'm just going to save this. This is uh, excellent stuff. So I'm just save it. There we go. And right on the second page, in about the middle of the top of the second page. Okay, right type there, Are these yeah. common common system type shortcuts here? And so these shortcuts are what I would follow the letter P with if I wanted these common types. So, for example, if I want a, want a property of type GUID, I'm just going to type in PG and then the space bar like that. Okay. Yep. Okay. And it's going. To, and if you go back to the code, let's switch back to the code so people can see what I just you did. Know, do you want to delete that and do it again? You bet. I, I often will say, I'll, let me just show it to you in slow motion. So PG, the night, the space bar, and it gives me this. Now I've got the name highlighted, so I can just say uh, my GUID or whatever I want it to be. Hit enter. And then, uh, and then I have, when I hit enter, I'm out at the end of the line right here. And uh, then I can just enter to go to the, to the next line. That's what it does inside an interface. Let me, I'm just going to quickly create out a class right. here. Uh, let me show you that in slow motion. I hit the letter C and then space bar. Okay. And then I'm just going to hit enter to get inside. And now if I type in the same letters here, PG, again, Bye. it gives me something yeah. different. Okay. Right here, and then I can type in my GUID or whatever I want it to be. I think this is the okay. part of when, that I was most impressed by when I'm watching your stream. So how it's context sensitive. It, it knows where it is and, and reacts differently. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Now, one of the things I just noticed, though, when I started changing here, it looks like it did not change it up there. Look, notice how the field disappears. I'm wondering this is a live share issue. Could be. Can you do me a f uh, do you? Oh, but you don't see these. On your side, Let me, I want you to do this. In the class I just created, I want you to uh, cr type in PG and spacebar in that class I just created, right where my carrot is. And I want you to change it on your side and see what happens. I think it's going to work, and it's. I think we've got, we just found another live share issue. Now, say my GUID or something. That's what's supposed to happen right there. Right. Okay, so we just have an issue here. I just want to note the time here. We're about 30 minutes in. So I can get my devs to look at this issue, and we can fix this live share issue. So this is another and feature that's that's, um, that's quite amazing. This you're actually dog fooding this product live on air three times a week, and um, feeding all the issues that you find back to your devs. And and 30 days later, we can expect those. Well, it's at least an, an update. That's it's incredible kind of turnaround that you do. Yeah. Um, CM Chris, CMJ Chris Jones says, but at least you have 2FA turned on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. At least I have that turned on. You're right. At least I do have that on. That's nice. Um, okay. So, uh, so that, so I mean, anything that has, I may ask you to expand templates that have multiple fields that are changing because those look like those are not changed automatically. That's okay. We'll have to figure, figure, figure that part out, but there's a context here that's going on. So back up here now you, so, so a regular property would be p and then the shortcut so like ps will give me a property of type string right if i if i come to the next line type in pi um, that's going to be a property of type int um, normally we use the shortcuts but because uh i was going to say because we're not using a system or you know what, this could be a setting that you've got it could well be actually there's a setting inside of code rush and i think there might be in visual studio as well um, that says use the shortcut names or use the full system uh, dot whatever names. So that may be why you're seeing something different than what I would normally see and what others might be expecting. So now let's say you want to create a property that's a dictionary of a certain type. So that, if we go back, can you bring back up the uh, cheat sheet yep. again? And let me see if I can find these on here. The generics, okay, here we go. So down near the bottom, if you scroll down the bottom of the second page, generic collections, two parameters. 
There's a dictionary right, oh, right there. Yes. And underneath there, there's a paragraph that says, follow these shortcuts with a dot, and then the shortcuts for the types of parameters separated by a comma. For example, nd dot s comma i creates a new dictionary keyed by strings holding integers. So based on that, Stu, try creating your dictionary here. So I'm going to do a pd dot si spacebar. Well, be s comma s, i. comma i. Because you need a comma to separate the ty those types. Okay. There you go. There it is. And then type in the name, whatever that name is going to be. So that's going to and be then uh, hitting enter should get you outside of yep. that. Yeah, it does. Like that. Um, and then now what you can do is you can go to your descendant of this. Your I, So what I would do at this point is you could use uh, selection increase, the plus key, to very quickly get extend the selection up to the top. Uh, I think hit the, not quite that far, hit the minus to go back one. Okay. And then you can hit the left arrow key and then the end left arrow key to get to the top and then the end key to get to the end. Um, Oops. Oops. Oh, you got to turn numlock yeah, off, okay, I yeah. think. End key, yeah. Oops, no. <laughs> there we are. And then just, I think you might have to left arrow to get your tab, and then to, just tab to, reference to work there. And then tab right there. And then you can go out and find out where it is. that is that's used. And then now here you can just type in the same thing again, where you can come down inside and you can say uh, pd dot i comma or what what is it is it is it the other way around is it is it keyed by strings or is is it a dictionary keyed by strings keyed yeah by, keyed by strings so pd dot s comma i. And there like it that. is. Oh, that's, that's created a. So we're going to create an automatic property here. So. Is there a different way of doing the automatic property? Yeah, use the letter A instead okay, of P. Okay. So. And you can do it right from the beginning okay. of the line. It'll all format the whole so thing. So that was at after AD time. dot S comma I space. Yeah. There it is. Super. Like that. Now, you could also have gotten that as well by going up on iAdventure Player and saying implement it for me, but. Um, uh, uh, this is another way. Yeah, to... well, and we're just showing so showing that's a shortcut, and, and the way it's, right. it's, it's actually this is put public in in front of it. Whereas when we were over here, of course, it didn't because it because it knows that in the interface you don't right. declare the um the access modifier. Right. So let's go back over into the class again. Let's talk about templates just a little bit more. Let's go into an empty line down in here. If you want to create a new method, I'm gonna have, actually. Uh, well, I can yeah, do, do this yeah. actually, Stu. I'll I'll do this stuff for you. So we're in Adventure Player. Uh, it looks like you've got me on screen. So if I want to create a new method, I just hit the letter M in the space bar, and it gives me this new method, whatever that is. And I can type in the name, uh, you know, my proc, whatever it's going to be, hit enter. Now I'm here. If I want a variable, I use the letter V. And then we do that same thing again. So if I want a variable of type Boolean, I type in B. And it's, that's going to be my, my whatever it is, uh, started, you know, whatever that is going to be. I hit enter. And now I can, if I, wanted, if I want to go inside, Notice um, under inside of my proc between the braces, there is, oh, actually, you, you don't see this on your side because, um, uh, so, so we're to demonstrate this, I'm going to delete okay. this and Stu, type in the letter M, hit enter or hit space bar. Uh, we we'll do it on its own empty yeah. line. It's got to be on an, an empty line. Okay. And now we can type in anything, hit enter. And now type in VB and space. So it's and interesting there, Mark, sorted. in the I get bool my end. And and when you did that, you got system.boolean. Oh, interesting. I bet it's uh okay, cool. So that means that's I think also a live um hold on a second. Let me uh make a note of that. Um uh, that's about system um, dot string versus yeah, that's interesting, and I, I, want, I bet that again has to do with the project settings. I bet I, I, I bet there's something about live share that I don't have access to that you have access yeah. to that that changes. So, um, Link Slumps is asking whose settings uh, is whose settings are picked up um, when you're in live share. Is it your settings that are kind of um, in force when you're typing? 
as opposed to my settings? Uh, I think it's the same as it would be without Code Rush in that my settings, whatever my settings are, are used for code I type Right. In, I yeah. think. Uh, any code I change. Uh, that's my guess. Uh, but I don't think there's, and, and similarly, any Code Rush related settings for anything I type in would be used, anything you type in. So here's where I wanted you to get. So here we're at flag. If you hit enter right now, there's going to be a change. Notice what changed. So now the carrot's to the right of the word flag. And between the braces, there's a little, what looks like a little uh, I-beam cursor. Yes. What that's telling you is if you hit enter now, you are, your carrot will go right at that location. It'll go there. But if you don't, okay, so now let's do it again. Let's go outside of this function, create a second function. And just type in M again. And call this test two. Press enter. And enter, enter, and then do VI for an integer parameter in the space. And then you can just hit enter here. We don't have to name this. Enter. Yep. Now, same scenario again, right? But let's say you want to add a second parameter. Just hit a space bar. Oh, I'm back up there, yeah. And then like, and then like VS for a variable type string. Oh. And watch what yeah. happens. It adds the comma for you automatically to the left. So all you have to do is space and then keep doing this. You can keep doing this here. Call this P2 or something like that, something simple and fast to type in. Hit enter. And then let's do. And now again, you're in that same spot. You can, if you're done, you can hit enter to get inside. You need a space. Though, space, too. okay. You're gonna need, you're gonna need a space so it knows that you're no longer in that. So yeah. uh, whatever you want, and then, and then give it a P3 name, and then finally, when you're done, you hit enter once to get out and finish this, and now enter to get inside. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A little bit different, but dr dramatically fewer keystrokes. Yeah. Right to get inside. Um, okay. Let, I'll take over for a second and do a couple demos here. I'm just going to delete these two pieces here. Got, I just wanted you to just do got that. one question Go in chat from Shieldsnable. It's what if you wanted to create an i dictionary rather than a dictionary? Is there a shortcut for using an interface type? Uh, I don't think so, I, but you can make one. So uh, we want to do something like this, yes. like that. Uh, okay, so the question is, can we use that? If I right click this, you need to right click it actually to demonstrate this. Right click the word i dictionary. Yeah. And I don't see use type in templates on yours here. Hit that option. But do I see it on mine? Why do I see it on mine? No, wait, I don't see it on mine. That means we must have something in here. So let's try it. Let me just see here. New ID, I would guess. Dot uh, S, comma I. Nope. I don't see it. Let's see. Well, here's what we can do. If you go into the Code Rush menu. Yep. Yeah. You, you, you're back? I'm back. Oh, excellent. Okay. There's a bit of a blip there, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you go if you go into your uh, Code Rush menu yeah. and go to Code Templates. Yeah. Now, code templates is just a quick way to get close to where I want you to be. Templates is actually not the options page I want you to be on, but the one right above it, template name variables, that's the one I want you to click on right yep. there. Okay. There you go. Yep. That one. And if we, and then I want you to maximize this uh, this options page so we can see um, everything on here. Excellent. And uh, go to change the language up at the top from C sharp to neutral. So these are very specific. Uh, so it's at the very top of this, yeah, the list box, right at the very top of the oh, language. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Right there it is. Neutral. Change to neutral. Yeah. And now these are all of the .NET types that are out there. Um, and so generic types, two params. Click on that one. It's the third one down in the list. In the Yeah, there you go. Right there. So we don't have dictionary yet. But we can add that. And so what we all we need to do to do, add that is to go down and, and uh, add a new entry here at the bottom, type in ID. I think you can just click there and say, so ID here. And then switch to the other side. And then you can actually copy that system collections generic dictionary above and paste it in uh, to where ID is expecting it. It's moved it because it, it sorted it. And change it to iDictionary. 
Now you have this, but I do not. But click OK now. And now if you come down in here and you type in uh, A for auto implemented property, ID for the shortcut for the piece we just added, dot, S comma I, space bar. There it is. You're done. Now, not only that, let's say you want to create a, let's go to the next line. Let's say you want to create a method that returns an I dictionary of strings, string indexed ints. All you do is type in M I D, Nope, 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 it's faster than MID. this. So, uh, yeah, MID dot. So MID, the dot means it's a generic. The comma is used if it's got more than one parameter. Right. So S comma I. And you're done. Oh, there we go, yeah. You're done, Brilliant. right? So wrapping your head around the language, even though at first it may be like, wait, what's happening? Right? The rules stay the same. The only thing that changes are the type references right. that are out there, right? So you can do those kinds of things if you want to. Um, let me make a, I just want to make a note over here. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to do? Oh, I want to show you. So now we're inside here. Now I want to show you some other things here. So um, I'm going to type in uh, if and then the space bar. And then if I do the space bar after that, it can, it's going to give me those parens. Yep. Um, uh, if I hit T in space bar, it's going to give me true. If I hit N in a space bar, it's going to give me null. F in space bar is going to give me false. Okay, so let's say I'm here. Now I want you to put the, your caret right where mine is. Okay, yeah. Okay, so imagine I've got an expression over there. I want you to type in the word and, A-N-D, and then hit space. <laughs> now... This actually, even though arguably and is three keys and this other one is two, this is actually easier to type in lower cognitive load than it is to go find that ampersand key, hold down the shift key, hit it twice, release the shift key, and then continue typing yes. for most yes. people, right? So you now backspace three times to get rid of that and now type in or and the space bar. Yeah. That's the, uh, these are the, some of the benefits of having space bar triggering is you get these things going without even thinking. So uh, every time I'm in an if statement, I type in the word, the, the word and or the word or because they're faster than, than trying to get these other shifted keys. And if you, shifted keys are a nightmare. You find you have to look, don't you? you have to kind of look down with the right key. You know, I have to, go and, yeah. I have to search where the, um, the pipe bar is, for example. Pop yeah, key. same thing. Now let's go to the, let's, I'm going to backspace a couple times here to get rid of this. Let's go to the uh, end of the line here. And here I just want you to go, you go to the end of the line now, and I just want you to hit the letter B and then space bar. Gives you those braces yeah. that we talked about before, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, I want you to go, go to the end of the brace and hit, or actually, yeah, go to the end of the brace, hit enter. Now I want you to just type in RN for return null. And there space bar. Right. Similar, you, you can type in RF to return false, RT to return true, R0 to return zero, R1 to return one. I think R negative one returns a negative one. There's a, 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 there's a lot of R. You can do an R quote to return a string as well. So you only have to type in one of the quotes. So R quote should work, either single or double quotes. Well, you gotta, oh, yeah. it's got to be only yeah. one R on the line. Oh, it's going to be a ref. I'll quote. That should not do that. This there we go. Work. I'll there press go. tab, you see. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. So um, so that's, and it looks like we don't have any uh, conflict with IntelliSense. Oh. No, we don't at the moment. No, that's interesting. So, maybe because we've so gone to good. the space bar. Maybe it's... Oh, not the tab. Yeah, yeah not the tab. Maybe it's kind of... Because obviously <laughs> we're on that quick setup. Presumably it's setting up other kind of options in the background. We we kind of saying we want to use this big feature, but it's kind of configuring all the kind of the, the nuances of that feature in the background somewhere. Maybe I'm not sure. All right, so uh, at any rate, all good news. So let's can we do this? Can we go? Uh, you were telling me that you had a uh, um, wait. Hold on. Yeah, I'm, so I'm going to delete that sample code we just created. So we're kind of getting back to where we were. Um, you said you had something that you did frequently when you created a new dungeon room. That's right. So um, if we kind of clear some of these away, we can have a look at that. So 
so for example here we've got a dusty cave so this is um this is a new dungeon room so you can see it's a uh, it's got these using statements in there um it's um inherits from well it, it implements um it so extends this um base class uh it's got yeah. kind of a, a relatively complex um constructor with these kind of standard items in it these are just a, a small selection of the uh, properties that are on a, on a uh, adventure location um but I, I was wondering if we could have kind of a, if we create some some shortcuts to enable us to create this structure and perhaps even sure. the adventure item as well which is another one we can see one of those so for example right, if you look at the dragon's tooth here you can see it's got some basic kind of structure to it in fact if we look at a more complicated one rather than the tooth um because it, I, what we can have on adventure items is we can define interactions how it interacts with um with how the user can interact awesome. with the environment so it would be great if you know i don't mind deleting code that's not new used but if it could create um you know some of this basic kind of boilerplate code um with kind of yeah. um with um let's yeah so let's start off with the um the location because that's probably a little bit easier all right so hit the selection increase key that num plus key since you've got that num plus plus keyboard option there and keep going until you get the whole class selected now back up there one go, yeah. with the minus there you go right click that now and i think we've got uh i don't use this feature very often selection to template okay. just below that's that it. do that okay. one i normally create from scratch because th that's what i've been doing for like 10 years and this is relatively new uh uh so let's see what we've got here um allow links between different kinds of identifiers allow links between camel case parts of identifiers no we don't want that simplify Types inside links and fields, trims everything but the type name. Uh, ooh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, link together all references too. So check Dusty Cave. I think you want yeah. that. See what's happening now? Look at how it's changed the text up okay, above. Yeah. You clear that checkbox. Yeah, it's got those links there. That means if you change one, the other changes as oh, well. Oh, right, okay. Um, the game parameter uh probably not that's probably always going to be it the is, same yeah. and you're not going to change that the location type i don't think you're going to change that is based on a guess and i don't you can keep scrolling down and seeing other things that you can link here um if or you can maximize this to see more let's have a look let's maximize it okay um so those are your link options right there i don't think really any of the types the types are not unlikely to change but that dusty cave type will yeah. Um, generate text fields for all references too. So text fields are things that you can change later. Um, you got a string in there, Dusty Rock Room. Yes, that's the name. You might yeah. want to check that. Yeah, I, I, I take that. Um, Where's that one? Down at the bottom, generate text oh, fields for yeah. all references too. Yeah. You might take that in the Dusty Rock yeah. Room. Was that a part of, that's a second one. The concat oh, there's still we can scroll down here. We can still scroll down to see. Now you've got one concatenated string in there, so that might be not the best. We might let's just say one of those we do. Are you you're not going to concatenate and always have two lines in the description? No, right no, here? it could be many lines, or it could be just like one line. Yeah. Okay. So let's just choose the first one there in a large room full of dusty rocks. Not not that one. We, yeah, yeah, that one first of the two concatenated. Anything else in there that you see offhand you want to change? Down and hole, maybe? Those, are those offered as options? It doesn't look like those are offered as so options. So those ones, were, what we what we could do within there is, um, I don't know if we can do it, but it would be just a new player move and just uh, so, so that there is a player move in there. Uh, I don't know if we can do that. All right. Well, let's click OK for now. Okay. Let's go to next. We'll click ne next for now. We can come back and refine it. Now it's asking where do you want to put it? Um, do we have, let's, there is not a create new folder here. Is that really the case? I have to go admonish uh, uh, some add devs new here. Category Hold on a second. Here. Uh, oh, add new category. Well, hold on. Right click, yeah, right click without selecting program. Or no, wait, just, you're fine. Just click on make. Yeah, add new category. Yeah. Make this a top level folder. Click that checkbox. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Okay. And then uh, save my templates or whatever, Sue's templates, whatever you want to want to want to have for this category, uh, like that. Click OK. Yep. And then say now, why don't I have an OK button here? 
Try clicking away from that and then clicking back on it again. That's really weird. Oh, that's not good. It's not letting me, you, you don't have an okay at all. Oh, I know why, you get, don't have a template name at the top. We have to give it a name. Okay. So up at the top, we gotta give it a name. So this is a uh, adventure location, is that yeah. right? So we're gonna, you, you could make it a, uh, so this is the, this, this template name is what you're gonna type okay. in to expand it. So new, NDR, so, I thought of new dungeon room. Okay, I think you can do that. That's fine. So click OK now. And wow. uh, here you are now with it. Now we can make more changes if we want. What I would do is uh, these strings, I would edit some of these these strings is what I would do. Um, and uh, because unless you want to keep them just as they no, are. Not really. But like the long description, I would I would kill the plus in the second in the second string in in there. To the semi, keep the semicolon. Huh. Yeah, I would kill that, and then I might, uh, you might change the text in between those two keywords there from in a large room full of dusty rocks to something else. Just enter whatever. It looks like the keyword in just to the left of. The, I'm sorry, the the word. Go ahead and delete that, and yeah, just two more. Yeah, there you go. So now you can just say, you know, enter description or something like this if you want to, like. Yep. And then above that, you've got another one field in the dusty rock room. Again, you can just say, you know, you can just, uh, you could delete all that. Keep that closing paren. You can delete, but enter the paren back. There you go. Like that. And the name you could use, you could do the same thing there too. And the same in here. Yeah. Let's call it name. Um, what else do we have here? We have location, the link to the dusty cave. This is where it's going to start, by the way. So it's interesting. So the carrot location is going to be the word carrot right above. That's where it's going to put the carrot for you there on that dusty cave. So you're going to, when you type it, uh, it's not going to show up there. It's going to show up. The first carrot is going to show up in the, to the right of the word location ID equals location dot. Okay. Which is okay because it's still the dusty cave type name. It appears, yes. um, but you can also change that if you want to from your mindset. You can take that caret command and move it up uh, above the word class if you want to. You can cut that to the clipboard if you want, cut it, or just delete it because there's shortcuts to at the top. Also, wait one other thing on this line at the end that block anchor, yeah. delete that as well. So this basically tells where the selection is going to be after the template expands, and instead go up to class. To the left of the word link, right there. There you go, right there. And now on the toolbar above, okay, you pasted yeah. it, fine. Go go to the end now, to the end of that red highlighted section there. And now up on the toolbar, hit the I-beam in the blue background. That means that's an anchor right, right there. That's a block anchor. And I think, I feel like, let's just try and play with it. Let's click OK and see how we are. And then see what we need to change. Okay, so if I do so, NDR, New Dungeon Room, Space, there we are. So I can say, so um, you got um, Underground River. And then hit Enter. Okay. Now I can't tell where you're at next. It's here. You enter. Did you hit it? Yeah. You should be able to hit Enter and it should go, you should take it to the next field. Didn't. Is it not? No. It does not look like that did that. Should we try again? Yeah. Copy Underground River to the clipboard so you don't have to do that no. again. So NTR space. There we go. And then oh. enter. Oh, you know what? I think I know what the problem right. is. The reason I, I totally, there's something else we forgot to copy and move. Because we changed it, I, I wasn't looking at what was around it. We have to go back into the template again. Okay. We put the carrot around a link, but not around a field. Um, the field was also there. So just, yeah, just go up into the, the uh, Code Rush templates page again. Code templates. No, it's just still there. So uh, looks like we're, we're on the NDR. So the piece we missed, are, we missed to copy our field start and field end on the location ID equals location line. 
Where's where's that here? The there yeah. right there. So so basically, you want to get rid of field end, and uh, had we taken what it give, gave us, it would have all worked. But we we partially modified it. You also want to take out field start at the beginning of that line, as well. Yep, from there to there. Perfect. Okay. And then now we want to add those in up above. So inside to the right of the word caret, yeah, between the two delimiters, we want to go up and do a field start. I think you're going to have to select it from the drop down. Is what you're going to have to right. do. So go into the drop down. Go field start there, and then before the block anchor, give me a field end. Okay. There you go. Click OK, and let's do it again. Now type in anything that's legal, hit enter, and you should go to the next. I do, yes. There you go. And now you, you again, type whatever you want. Hit enter to get to the next piece. And you keep yeah. going until you get to the end. All right. And then when you get to the end, I want you to, I want you to, we, I want to stop and I want to ask you what, what do you want to change about the code now? Okay. So I think what I would, what I would like to see is, um, you see, we've got these player moves here. Yeah. I think just um, some kind of default text in there, really. So, so I, you know, so what? What? It, so, so the way I kind of tend to do it is to have just a commented out one, which I can then uncomment. But we could have, you know, for example, just that one line, um, and then I would need the let's create I would the, need the carrot to be here, so I could then type in the location it's going to go to. Yeah, let's do this. This is going to be faster. Select this line, the the line of, that you that you're on, just this line of code. Uh, from new to the end of line, just from the, okay. the the word new to the, that's fine. And let's right click it and say, uh, create template again for that. Selection to template up at the top there, near the yeah. top. There you go. Yeah. And then we're going to, uh, we're, so generate text fields for all references to, uh, we're going to change, we only need to have beyond compliance junction. There's, is I, I think we can just click next on this. I don't think we need to do anything special here because there's no linked identifiers that I can yeah. see. And then give it a name. Uh, it's going to be... New player uh, move. Yeah, NPM, maybe. Mm. New player yeah. move. Make sure we're in the right folder, though. Does it select it? Scroll down and see if we've got your folder selected. That's the one we want. And now click OK. And now let's go in. And so now what you want to do is double-click on Complex Junction, the piece where you want to have the carrot, yeah. cut it to the clipboard, Okay, and are we gonna are these things in strings gonna be things we're gonna modify too? Yes. And, okay, so we want to create a, a field here is what we want to do. So, but we also want this to be the first one. So we want to hit the caret button, which is the I beam in the white background. Yep. Now we want to paste. Oh wait, you might have to move the caret to the right. I think it's selected when it pastes it right there. Just move the caret to the right yep. and then the left. It just get it. now paste what you have in. Yep. And then now let's hit the block anchor button. Oh, no, wait. Wait, we don't want to do it. Go to the left of complex junction. Yep. I forgot to uh, hit the orange button with, that looks like a field. On there. there you go. Yeah. And now what you can do is you can take that complex junction, get rid of that. It's still on the clipboard. And then to the right of the word field inside the delimiters, so right there to the between the D and the ending delimiter, put an open paren and a closed paren like a parameter. Yeah. And then inside the parameter, paste in that piece that you just had on the clipboard. Right. And then now move right two times. And then now let's hit the uh, end block, the anchor bu button, the blue one. There you go, right there, the block anchor. Right. Now uh, go down for each of the fields that you want. Take the word down, cut it to the clipboard. Yep. Hit that orange button again. Yep. And then do the same parens and paste that piece in there. If you don't have parens, it's just going to be it's it's not going to give you that default text. Right. So the advantage of the default text is if you're going to use it, sometimes you just hit enter. You just have to hit enter on it. Okay. So field down, and then the same for um for the D. Yeah. yeah. If you if that's what you want to do. In fact, you can copy and paste yeah, the field down that you already have if you want to. And then uh, replace it with the, the word down with the letter D. 
And and then now I think you're good. Click OK. And wait, why not? Wait, wait one, one more thing I want to do. I want to go back to the NDR. What? Let's go back to NDR template. Now the NDR template, it's right above. Yeah, there you go. Now the NPR, notice at the end, it's got that final target. Yeah. That's where the carrot goes when you're done pressing enter inside. Okay. What we want to do is we want to replace those three lines of code in there that say new player move with the final target is what we want to do. So we want to, yeah, delete that, add, take final target and uh, cut it and then put it up on in between those lines right there. And I think you probably want to indent that because I think you want to have the indentation yeah. there where you want it to be. And I think that's it. So now this is very cool. Now you've got two sets of templates that are working together. Um, hold on a second. I need to get one of my, I lost the chat window and I want to grab it and get it, bring it back up here. Where is my chat window? So there's actually a question in there, but just before we kind of move on from Michael Jolly, he's asking you, do the template shortcuts work in JavaScript or TypeScript? Uh, yes, they do. But they are there are slightly different uh, slightly different templates in JavaScript and TypeScript. Right. Um, so, for example, to create a method, you use the letter F because it's a function in that world instead of the letter right. M. Um, so, yeah, the answer is yes. I'm actually live coding um, uh, at twitch.tv slash code rushed with an ED at the end of it. Um, and we give away copies of code rush like every episode. Uh, so if you want a copy for free, all you got to do is hang out with us uh, uh, and uh, until the end of the show. And that's when we give them away and just in the chat room say, hey, I'd like a free copy. That's what we've been doing for the last couple of days. It's amazing. So, yeah. Um, so, OK, so let's click OK and let's actually write. Oh, wait. Yeah, let's click OK. But one other thing I want to do, I want to go up to the top of this file and I w uh, want to grab the using statements yeah. here. Copy both of those. Let's go bring up the template editor one more time because it'll add these automatically for us, which is going to be useful. So we want to make it so it does that. So we're going into code templates again one more yep. time. And now down in there where it says dependent namespaces. Uh, in, yeah, right. Yeah, your carrots, right, your mouse is right nearby. Down, down, down. It's a big text oh, here, box yes. near the bottom, right? Paste. And get rid of the words using on both of those. Uh, and I think we don't need the semicolon at the end, but I hope we're smart enough to be to to not die if we have that right. in there. Um, and then click OK on that. And now uh, let's do this. Let's delete the ones you've got selected now. Yep. So pretend we don't have those. Delete the using statements at the top of the file before you expand it and show that the templates will add them if they're not there. Okay. It'll add whatever's needed. So now type in NDR. And you should see the user statements pop yeah. in at the top. And then now check it out. Let's we're gonna add, we're gonna type in what we're gonna type in for this piece right here. And uh, and then hit enter, enter, enter. And now we should show up between the valid moves. And then we're gonna type in uh, N uh, P uh, M for new player move right here. N P M. And then you just you just crank you just crank it out right you're just making the changes uh, right there and notice you can use IntelliSense with uh, what you're what you're typing yeah. in or this is Intel this is code rush this is IntelliSense this is IntelliRush right there by the way so um, uh, you can also use amazing um, yeah so so it's getting much faster yeah. right or it can be there let's look at the other piece you want to create a template for. And you you had both an ex a simple example and a, and a complex okay, example. Okay, so if we look at and I just want to yeah. go ahead. Okay, so we look at if we look at um, let's just clear up some of this. It's a bit getting a bit uh, a bit busy at the top here. So carrying, deactivate, update, open, close, unlock. So we've got um, a dragon's tooth, which is a simple item. This happens to be a treasure item, but um, they're not always treasure items. Uh, so this is obviously it's, it's just got a um, a small set of um, uh, properties. So this is the simple version. You can see it's got once again it's got uh, inherits from it extends uh, venture item. It's got the relatively complicated um, internal. Um, is it really internal? Here's an internal um, constructor. And um, 
and just these items really uh obviously things can be kind of true or false that's not really that's not really a problem the, the more complicated one yeah sure about the name and plural name yeah. uh what's the asterisk oh they're just um in in markup they'll be um in italics so if the if the Got if it. the client understands markdown it will uh, italicize it otherwise it just puts the two stars next to it and that's really to indicate to the player that if they want to pick up the item they use the word between the stars or the italicized word so they just um take tooth yeah or take teeth you know that's what it, that's really kind of so they don't type in take dragon tooth all right can we you want to do something cool yep that's totally off rails which is you know what that's I do, what we like, do all yeah. the time yeah. um yeah, so do this. Go into uh, your options. Go bring up the Code Rush options. Yeah. And um, let's see here. Go to uh, in the search in the upper left, the top left search. Yeah. Type in embed. Embed, yeah. And selection embeddings is the one you want to go to. Go to the selection embeddings option yeah. page. This is that option that we were talking about where you hit a, a single key. Now, you can also right-click to get this list of menu items that are here. Um, go down and click on uh, the italic down there in the bottom right there yeah. and take a look at this. This actually will uh, <laughs> create italic comment in a comment if you've got rich comment feature turned on in Code Rush. But what we can do is we can make we can create a shortcut for you that embeds in italics that can we can bind to control plus I and a similar for bold if you want as well, that only works if you're in a string. Right. If that's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. A, I, okay, so if you're gonna do that, so let's do that. So what we wanna do now is we want to, uh, that plus sign above the list box, the second list box right there, or I guess the, the first one on the left here, the, there's a tree list oh, here, yeah. Far left. Yeah, that plus sign right there. Click on that to create a new embedding. Yep. And there's our new embedding right down there. Um, and let's call it, uh, the name of this is, uh, this is the name that we're going to need to call from another location. So we want to give this kind of like a programmatic name here. So we're going to call this uh, italic stir or something like that. Stir italic, something like that. S-T-R italic. Whatever we call it, we're going to copy this to the clipboard when we leave this page and go to the shortcuts page. The caption is what appears uh, uh, visually in the menu. So we're going to say italics, for example. Yep. And um, the style is going to be uh, very similar to the other one, which it's the one it's there. There are options. Yes, that one right there, that one on the far right. It's that style, which means out of whatever my selection is, even if it's multi-line, I'm going to put something at the beginning at the and at the it, end right. of that selection. Okay, yeah. But there are other embeddings that'll wrap around, create boxes around things, put things in the left and the right. Those are all the options there. Um, and then the next thing is that we need to worry about is, uh, well, the top line and the last line. So you're just going to put a, an asterisk in both of those, right? So one single asterisk there and one single asterisk there. Okay. Good. Then you're going to go to the previous italic uh, one, that's there, and you're gonna copy the context in that entry there. Take that, because that's gonna take care of most of what we want, and copy it, and then paste it here. Right. We don't want in any comment, though. We actually want the opposite of in any comment, so we can put a bang symbol right in front of that open bra bracket on in any comment. The open square bracket the, or the uh, round bracket? Mark. The square right. bracket, before the square bracket, Put an exclamation okay. mark. So now it cannot be any, but we also want to add in any string, and we want that to be a positive context. So to move left uh, till you're in front of the uh, open paren. Yeah. There you go. Now click the dot, dot, dot to the right of this text box so we can bring up some UI and type in the word string. And th we should see that's what we want. In string, click on that, click OK. And then now to the right of that, just hit the right arrow key so we get the carrot there. And now now type in a space, double ampersand space. Okay. Right there, just so the spaces I think are optional. But now this says, this is only going to fire off in a string. Now go back up to the name of this, that stir italic, copy that to the clipboard. 
Okay. And I just, I, yeah, I'm going to click okay. We technically probably don't have to, but I'm always, I'm always, I'm sorry, not okay. Right. I, I meant apply. Okay. I meant apply. No big deal. <laughs> we'll go back in. Um, and it was in. And now we're going to go to shortcuts. Wait, go to shortcuts, shortcuts right there. Right. Now that's just going to take us right to that page. And now we want to create a new folder for, for our own custom shortcuts. So let's do that. New folder. And we're going to call this my shortcuts or whatever you want to call it. Make it a top level folder. Ch click that. Otherwise, it's going to put it under code. Yep. And now click the button up at the top to create a new shortcut. It's the one on the left. There you go. And then now uh, the sh first shortcut is just going to be control I right there. Should be able to hit control I right now. Okay. And you, should, you should see it. All right, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, on yeah, the, there it is right there. Okay. All right, uh, and then the command is going to be embed. I think you start typing in EMB. Uh, I don't think that's what we want. Should hit the drop down. There should be an embed or maybe selection embed. Maybe it's selection embed. There, there it is right up there, selection embed. Yep. Okay, and then parameters paste in what you got. Yeah. Now, we want to also give this a context. The context should actually be what the other piece was, which I don't remember. It's probably easier to go back and find it and then copy it and come back over okay. here. So what I would do is go uh, go up in your search in the upper left. Yeah, this is where my nervousness says, click apply always, <laughs> but I'm sure you don't have to. But go, yeah, go up on the upper left and let's type in uh, embed again to go back to that other options page. Go find that context, uh, which is down on italics there. Grab that. And uh, and then go back over to shortcuts. And you're going to have to go up and search for shortcuts, I think, is what you're going to have to do up here. Okay. There it is down there. And then uh, control I selected and then paste that in under the context. And uh, click OK. And now if you're in a string and you type in control I, it should highlight it just like we uh, specified. So you got to select something. Okay, now. select that. Okay. See if it works. I've got some kind of Nothing? symbol that's come up. What's this? Uh, got a, a like a down arrow that's appeared. Can you see that? My cursor's changed mm. to a to that. That doesn't make sense to me. Let me see what's going on. Let me see if I can. Uh, quickly uh, duplicate this. Um, and I'm going to just to save time, not create the context just yet. Shortcuts. Yeah, let's see here. New folder, new template, control I is the binding. I'll probably type something in wrong, yeah. Mark. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I'm like the, uh, uh, the fact that control I is there means it indicates to me like there's a, uh, something else maybe getting the key. Right. But, um, but let's see what happens here. I'm going to, I'm just going to do it quickly on my side over here. Italics. Uh, I'm doing it without any context, so let's do that. Uh, also did not work for me. I got like, um, uh, that's interesting. So I think we're gonna have to look closer at this. Yeah, I got the down arrow too. Oh, you know what it huh? is? It's, um, uh, hold on a second. It is uh, the down arrow that you're seeing. This is a feature of Visual Studio that's uh, coming in here. So wait, let's go look at my binding here. Is there some option that I've got on the binding? Uh, no, I don't. I don't get it. I don't see why that. I think the problem is the control I Visual Studio is taking yeah. it and getting it before Code Rush. Let's go into shortcuts and change it, change the binding to like control shift I or something like that. So we can still at least demonstrate it and, uh, um, and take a look at it. There you go, my shortcuts. And change that binding. Just put the caret in there and type in control shift I. All right, give it a shot. See what happens. Yeah, that works. All right, there you go. 
All right, so that's 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 an example of how to do that's that. really so good. You have bold things like that. Yeah, the the it, while it took a little bit of time to set that up, overall, if you're working and you don't have to, even though you might save a little time, a bit at a time as you move forward, um, you're also saving cognitive load, right? If you're like, oh, I can just very quickly come in and hit this button. So um, that is that. What uh, we got a couple other things we talked about. We wanted to show. We were talking about we wanted to show the uh, the image embedding. Yes. And I, I kind of want to show the formulas too because I think they're kind of cool. Do you want? Is there anything else you want to talk about with regards to these two templates here, with regards to these pieces, the 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 dragon tooth and the other? No, piece? I think I, I can have a go at um, setting those up myself. Um, just that the, the the kind of one question was, as I say, I um, this has got a kind of method as well, this interact method with it. Can you create that in the template as well? Yeah. So the way I would do this is this. Let's do this. Let's actually do this. We'll create both of these really quickly. Okay. Okay, so let's go into Dragon Tooth first, the smaller yep. case example. Let's use Selection Increase to grab the class. Yeah. Let's right click it, uh, do the selection uh, to template. Selection to template, yeah. Feature. And uh, we want to grab Dragon Link together, Dragon Tooth for sure. Yeah. And anything else uh, if you, you see them inside of there that you think we're likely to change. And you can come back and tweak these later as well. Are you and when you're good, click next. Okay. Okay. Uh, put this down, make sure your folder selected down the bottom, the my templates folder, and give it a name uh, of this is gonna be New Dungeon uh, Item NDI. New Dungeon Item. Now wait, one thing though. Uh, Simple item. Do this. No, no. put it. No, 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 no. Do just do I. But this is a convention that we do in Code Rush. Put a comma here, and a, and we're going to do the other one, and we're going to make it NDI without a comma. And so what that means is, if I add a comma, I want a shorter version of. Okay, template. right, yeah. All right, and so that's consistent with other Code Rush uh, conventions as well. So click OK on this. And uh, and just for the interest of time, let's just click OK on. Uh, oh, scroll down. I think it's it's interesting. It's got the NPM selected. Scroll down. I think the other one has been added. I just want to make sure. So that where's it's that? Added the one. Scroll down. Yeah, scroll down right here. At the, the there's the NDI comma. Right yeah. There. Hold on. I got to make a note. Uh, I'm wondering if this is a new build that is highlighting the last template expanded this may be a new issue here okay um, it's about uh, eight, uh, about um an hour and eight, 18 minutes in thanks uh i i just want to make sure because yeah I, I i made a request to say i want to see the last template expanded however if i do if i uh create the um the the template from uh selection to template we want to show that one yeah so I think that's I think that's this is a new bug new issue in our in the build that you and I have. Um, okay, so now let's just click OK. I don't want to make any changes yeah. here. And now let's go to the other one. Now we haven't added the usings here, so we'll, you'll have to do that yeah. later. But let's go to the big one now and do the same thing. Let's use selection increase to grab the whole thing, get the whole class. Yeah. Once you're there, right click selection to template. And uh, grab the, the important pieces here. Linked. You might want to full screen yeah, this because there's a lot, a lot of stuff things there. that it's scanned, right? Um, the dragon is the one that you want to link together, right? Yeah. The class name. I don't see that in there yet. Oh, there it is, right there. Generate text fields for all references to dragon type. It's right near the top of. Yeah, there yeah. you go, right there. That we want for sure. Anything else that you want to change in there? By all means, go ahead and change. And when you're ready to move on, click next. You can grab other fields, um, that sort of thing. The the link together, those are things that found that were the same. So the links just, in general, you don't want links unless, unless they're likely to change. Right. Everything else is grayed out there under that, that list. Is it really? Mm. Well, that's the dragon type. Can you unselect it? Yeah. And select it again. That's crazy. I'm. I want. 
Debs to see that. Word about what? 120? 120 AM. Okay, I'm going to get uh, um, the lead dev for this feature on that to look at that. I believe that looks like it's a mistake, but let's go ahead and click on next anyway. I'm okay with I'm okay with the uh, with that for now anyway. In my templates again, and um, and then this is going to be NDI without the comment. Right. Let's go ahead and click OK. Okay. All right. And then uh, I think we can we can uh, click. You can take a look at it if you want to. Uh, down there, there uh, NDI without the comment is there. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let's go back up. Verb to see. Wait, what's happening here? Was this stuff all? I don't understand what these dollars. No, I don't either. Are. No, that's a bit weird. So it seems to have converted um, quotation marks into uh, into those characters. That's super interesting. Okay, can you do me a favor? Can you copy what you've got here inside of this? I, I want to get the whole dev to look at this as well. So like, yeah, you can just select all, copy that, paste that, send that to me uh, in Skype, and uh, so I can get the dev to look at this. Uh, take a look at that. Um, so you're you're gonna have to manually go through uh, and change this, or what we can do too is let's just do this. Click OK, click OK on this. Let's also, you know what I want you to do too? Send me uh, this that that. I want you to use selection grace here again. Select all the way to class dragon. One more, I think. And now copy and send me this too, as well in Skype. Just so that we can see what the see what we're dealing yeah. with here. Um, and then what I want you to do though is I want you to go back into the templates with this on the clipboard. Code templates. And go to that NDI and now just do a select all and paste. Oh yeah, look at this. It thought the whole thing was a field. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, so that's definitely a, a bug there. Hit control A there to select all. Now paste in. Now we can go in and make some changes here if we, we want to, to change the class. So to change that first dragon right there at the top, uh, you can cut that to the clipboard. And now that now what I want you to do is do a let's do a carrot to the left of that is the carrot. That one there. Yeah, that one there. Then I want you to click the orange and uh, or actually you want to move to the right so the carrot uh, is not selected. Get to the that's selected there. That's also something I want them to fix too. And now click the green and orange button. The green and orange, not the not the orange or the green, but the green and, and orange, orange okay. combo button. Yeah. You're gonna to want to space there before the after the word class. Yeah. Okay. And then the green and orange the one. Green there. and orange one. And then in the word link, right inside the word link, there you go. The prints put put the paste in what's on the clipboard. Right. Now, if you take just the link command itself from move the carrot right to, yeah, there you go. Select from there to the end delimiter. Copy that. Everywhere dragon appears, you can replace it with that. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay, now you're now you're good to go. You can similarly, I think you've got enough where you have a sense of how to change these other. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I can go and do all that. Right. Click OK now, and now try those two different templates. Um, you're also going to want to add dependent namespaces if you ever want to expand this in like an empty yeah. file, for example. So now you can type in NDI. NDI comma space, and I get that. Yeah. So there's a there's a bit of fiddling to do here, so I can I'll, I'll that'll be te that'll teach me how to, that'll embed all this into me to how to change this. So that's good. Right, right. This one, right? Yes, but you can also change. It looks like you can change just from that selected dragon tooth, and it'll change everywhere else. But yeah, you can fiddle with these. Like if you change that, yeah, it, it should does, change yeah. the other two. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're you you can keep that template as it generated it for you. And now try the other one, the NDI without the comma. Yeah, there we are. And that's the big one. And now you can go through and say, okay, now at this, where are the points that I want to make changes to the yeah. code, right? Where are those going to be? And uh, I do recommend investing a little bit of time to change these because it sounds like these are things you do all the time. Um, and having an experience where you're doing something all the time easily results in lower cognitive yeah. load. So that's all. Um, can we paste a, a graphic in? Can yeah, we do sure, that? yeah. Can we paste an image into the code? Yeah. All right. So, um, so I need you to go go someplace where you can copy an image. It can be a website or an image editor. Whatever I've got you want um, to do. I've got some images um, 
over here in my um so I've got code base alpha um logo logo here. Uh this one here. Cool. So can you copy this from here? So, yeah. Right click copy yeah. it. Perfect. All right, now go into the code, put a comment in the code, and then hit paste. We'll do this in the startup uh, file. Okay, so here. There we go. And I'm not seeing anything. Did it not paste? Oh, do you want me to paste? Okay, yep. Yeah, there paste. It is. There you go. All right, cool. And now you can click on it and you can resize it. And uh, and Coders takes care of everything that you need. Oh, by the way, when you resize it, you might want to hold the shift key down. But but here's the thing. Let's change the aspect ratio of it and show what happens how to fix that if you do that. Okay. If you hold the shift key down, it'll maintain its, its okay, aspect right. ratio. But, but let's click this and let's resize it so that it's like really narrow or really wide. One of the two. Okay, like that. Now you can come in and right click it. Yep. And you can choose restore and you can choose aspect ratio. Oh, right, great. And it'll and it'll just basically as if you held the shift key down to resize it. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, that's kind of cool is there's, well, you've got cropping ability here too. Have you seen that, uh, no. Stu? Okay, so you can right click this if you want to crop it. So, so imagine you just took a screenshot of something right. and you want to zoom in, right? So let's crop it. So we just on like the word base inside Codebase Alpha. So let's just just drag those uh, left and right uh, pieces there. Perfect, and then click outside, and that should commit the uh, the commit. Now right click it, and let's zoom in on that. Let's say pixel scale, and let's try uh, two hundred percent. Yeah. And so you can come right in there, and, and you can even go to like let's zoom in even more on it, like um, uh, if you want to. Let's go to like four hundred percent. Sure, why yeah. not? Like that. And so you're, it's actually doing a pixel scale. Now, if you were to grab the corner and scale it, it's going to do a, an interpolated scale where it's kind of like a smoother looking kind of thing. But a pixel scale will scale so that you can actually see each pixel. So if you want to zoom in on something, you take a screenshot, you put it in the code for reference, like temporarily, and you work with it. Um, it's that kind of a thing. It's useful in that kind of scenario. Um, I wanted to show you that. So it supports images copied like essentially from anywhere and pasted in the code. Um, also useful, like for, uh, like logos and things like that. Um, if you, uh, that's really you know, good. For example, want to put your, or your logo in the code, other people open it up. If they got code rush, they're going to see that. You can also right click this and you can set, uh, a link up Okay. Yeah. on this so that when people open this up and they've got code rush, uh, that top item right there, and you can say, open URL when they click the link and you can specify what that link is. So I go to our Twitch channel. There we go. Excellent. And then click OK. And then now you've got that, where if you just click on it, it will uh, go it right is. out to it. Just, it does. And if, if you want to resize or crop, you just right click it instead once the link is set up. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, which is kind of cool in terms of cool stuff and comments, is, um, is uh, and I, I can show this, I think, remotely here. Let's go to. Hold on, I've lost, I had a different instance of Visual Studio up. Um, by the way, in mine, it's kind of cool. What I, I don't see the code base alpha because our images aren't shared yet. Right. We don't have the same pieces. We're on live share. So I don't see it on my side. I see a broken image symbol indicating that there's an image there, okay. but it cannot find that that particular piece. Okay. Um, so where, where's that I image mean, actually stored, uh, Mark? Is it, is it in, in the um, in the uh, project solution. structure? It's in the solution, is it? Yeah. Yeah, so if you right click your solution and say go uh, open in uh, open that uh, in a new window, in an explorer window, open folder in file explorer. Yeah. You'll see a .cr. Yeah. And if you open up .cr, you're going to see a little folder called images. There we go. So if you want to check those in, you can do that. Now you've got two different images that look alike, but those are not uh, bit wise equivalent. No. If they were, you'd only see one in Yeah. Here. Code Rush, basically the name of that image is the, um, is the, uh, oh wait, hold on. These do actually look like they have the same name. No, one's got an underscore one at the end of it. Yeah, but everything else is the same. I wonder why that's the case. We should have, that should have only been one. Now, again, I'm noting the time I want to have 
Right, Debs, look at this. 3.30 is my time, which was where? We're one, one hour, 30 minutes in. Yeah. So what we want to do, image, uh, two images in there. Interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, the, the other thing I want to show is, um, and I can do this remotely here. Yep. Uh, am I in the same folder as you start up? Yep, I am. So uh, let's go in here, and you can do formulas as well. This is a new feature. Um, this feature, by the way, you have to go into options, uh, Code Rush options. Why don't you do this, Stu, and uh, I'll show you where the uh, okay uh, where the feature is. Uh, and if you type in on the left, you type in formula. I think in the upper left. I think we I think we'll find the page or or rich formula. I think you're gonna have to give a little more than that because we've got a lot of formatting options showing up. Rich comments or rich comments. Go ahead, click okay. on that. And then it's that enable latex formula support beta right okay. there. If you click on that and then click OK. So these are different things you can do in comments. So we can have different font sizes, stuff like that. So um, you've got the option enabled, which means I can just kind of demonstrate some of these uh, right here. If I want to create a formula, I can just type in forward slash F like that. So forward slash for a comment and F for a formula. And then if I want to create like a fraction, I can type in a backslash F like this um, and then space bar and then that will expand it out. And then I can type in uh, like whatever my numerator is going to be, like a one here and a two there, something along those lines. And uh, maybe I want to say uh, times, and then I want to do like a an nth root of something. So I'm going to type in backslash uh, nr like this, and then expand that template. And then now I'm going to specify what that root value is, like say, for example, three. And I don't know, for lack of something better, 27. I can do that. I can also come in here and reference, for example, a variable name, like uh, I might say like, uh, you know, config.x equals like this. <laughs> and so I can do, I can reference my variables right in there. Let's say my nth root was a variable as well. I could come in here and edit uh, that as well. Uh, instead of it being three, that might be B, or it might be, um, uh, it might be uh, hello uh, world or something like that. Right, whatever that is. So I can create formulas that describe what's going on uh, that are viewable inside the editor, right? Like that. So it's kind of cool stuff. There's kind of cool technology out there. Um, let me do this. I kind of want to leave you with some links and stuff. We already gave the, um, uh, uh, we already created the, um, we had the link to the cheat sheet that was out yep. there. We posted that earlier. It uh, might be good to post that one more time. Okay. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up was the uh, the Code Rush uh, feature of the week video series on YouTube. Let me get that link and put that out here for you. Um, these are cool things as well. It looks like uh, oh wait, I did I had a crash of um, of uh, Chrome. And so I lost the chat, code base alpha. Let me get you back here, code base alpha. And I'm gonna just paste this uh, link in the chat room. There we go. And I just heard the audio there come by. It sounds like the lag is pretty short, um, like seconds, yeah. uh, like about two seconds. And so there, that's a link to the uh, coder feature of the week. Um, and that's kind of what I would say is a, a, a decent introduction to Coderush. We did not do the debug visualizer. If you want to step through code real quickly, we can do that. Yeah. Um, if you want. Yeah. Up sure to you. We can do something. And uh, all right, let's do that. And maybe we also talked about creating test cases. I can show you those things real quickly. So, so test cases might be a bit more complicated because I've I've, I've got quite a lot of uh, faking going on. So um, we probably should skip that one. Uh, that's something we can kind of okay. We can maybe do a set in time or I can investigate myself. Um, well, let's do, actually, let me just tell you the quick, shortest thing you need to remember yeah. here. You've got the tests up right here. If I want to create a new test class, I just type in T and the space bar. Well, T and the space bar is not working for me. It should work for you. I bet it works for you. Try that. See if you can get, no, not down there. Oops. You want to go inside the names. Didn't read off. <laughs> I think it's not working for me because I think it's a yeah, live share, share issue. Okay, I'll get there. Test class, and then yeah. the sec, the second thing I want you to do is after, go down uh, after line 32, I think learn, line after line 33. Yeah. And uh, go on an empty line. And if you hit the letter T again in the space bar, it's going to give you a test yeah. method. So all you have to do is remember T for tests. 
and now you can just quickly bring those things up. Selection increase and then delete. Selection increase multiple times and then delete to delete this piece we just added. It's the fastest way to get out of that. And so that's the test cases, simple demo, fast. Yeah. Um, what is, uh, what's the other thing we want to do? Should we, should we, uh, we want to do debugging. Do the quick debug. Um, okay, so the best thing to do would be to go into... Um... Do we still compile, by the way? Because we've been making a number of changes on this, and I'm not sure we undid everything. Should be okay, I think. Okay. Still going. It's quite a big project, so yeah, it can pass. So if I go All into right. the bot class, and if I pop a, uh, so there's already a breakpoint on on this point initial startup. Okay. So if I actually run this now, we should hit that breakpoint, and there's a, there's a initial startup which will be true initially on the first the first run through oh interesting it started on my side as yeah, well yeah we'll do <laughs> that's live show. yeah it's a bit odd sometimes isn't it okay so here we are we've hit that and you, yes we can see the word true here cool uh so that's essentially the essence of it as you go through if you hit f10 and just kind of go through you're going to see values as you're stepping through the code. If there's space to show it without having to add a line, it'll do that. Notice line 51, it hasn't increased the size of the line. Yeah. Same thing with line 54, because it sees there's space there. It's, it knows where the code is. But if there is something blocking, it'll increase the height of the line. It'll animate that up uh, as you go through. So if we keep hitting F10 here, let's see what happens. We now go, we yeah. see chat client was null. Then we see chat client changed. Now we're on this line of code right here. And you can kind of see what's happening there. Notice line 55, it did increase. Yes, it did, yeah. So and I, it's also saying, also the, it's telling me that I've got a Discord chat client now, which is really and it useful. it changed too. Mm. Yeah, it changed because it was white and then it went to red, meaning it changed. So when you, by the way, get to line the line 61, initial startup, when you get down there, when you go to execute it, notice you haven't executed the line yet. Notice it said true, yeah. and then as soon as you executed it, it switched it to false. Also very cool, right? Yeah. You're right there, and the data you need is right there where your eyes are looking. So very cool feature, the debug visualizer. That's pretty amazing, yeah. All right, Sue, I'm going to get out of here, yep. buddy. Thank you very much, Mark. Honestly, thank, thank you so much as well. Um, I appreciate it. If you have any questions, you know, uh, just uh, reach out and uh, – and, uh, we might, if you want to later on, if you want to do a second show where we do like part two, kind of going more in depth on stuff, we can do that or, you know, whatever. It's, I'm okay either way, but I was just, it was occurring to me, oh, what, wouldn't that be interesting after Sue's used it for a while? Yeah. That we go back in again and, and with new questions. I think that'd be a good idea because so. I'll have a lot more questions and there's a few things we didn't cover today, um, uh, which I'm, I'm interested in, for example, the markers and, and moving those around. So um, I am really, really appreciate you joining us, uh, Mark. So um, thank you very much, and uh, here's some applause for you. Wait, I don't hear any applause. Oh, because I'm not listening to the screen. <laughs> no. first, that's why. Oh, hey, um, am, if, am I still on? You're still not, on, yeah. Uh, okay, so let me, let's me let do this. You said markers. I forgot about markers. Okay. Let me show you a couple things with markers here. So markers are, are – there's an option in Code Rush to drop markers automatically whenever you drill into a client. So, or, so we drill, drill in to see a definition. So if you were to put the caret on connected clients right there, fine, and then drill in, say go to definition, whatever your shortcut key is for that. I think it's like F12 or control F12 or something like that. Yeah. Go to definition. Now try hitting escape, see what happens. Hey, <laughs> going back, yeah. yeah. Perfect. So that feature's turned on, that's excellent. Now you can also drop a marker manually. So you can drop a mark, mark if you wanna come back to a place just hold down the Alt key and hit Home. The way I remember it is, oh, I always want to go back home, so Alt Home. Yeah. Was the short. Oh, it's put a little red there you, you, there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you. Yeah. So now go anywhere in your solution. And now let's see. We want to come back here too. Let's like see the word Room just to the left. Double click on the word Room or select it, 
and now drop a marker by hitting Alt Home. Okay. Again. Now this time you won't see, because we've got a selection, There's a it's a different kind of marker that's there. I don't actually see if there's, there's anything drawn there or not. It looks like it's not drawing anything. But uh, normally I'm expecting there to be a uh, uh, brackets right there drawn. Let me try again. Um, if you go, it, it might be there. Hmm. I think it's there. I think we're, we may not, there may be an option here for displaying it. If we click away, go anywhere else now. Okay. And now let's find our way back. Hit escape. Yeah. And there you're there. Hit escape again. And back here. And if you've dropped it twice, okay, there we go. And then we're going back. Yeah. So they're stacked based. So I'll often use this as well. Sometimes I'm writing code so fast I can't finish what I'm doing before I go somewhere else. And so I'll drop a marker, go somewhere else, drop, do, you know, implement what's in my head, maybe even do that again or again. And then I use escape to find my way back. Yeah, and that's, so that's, that's really kind of cool. Because oftentimes you want to, you start writing a piece of code. Oh, I, I want to put the, uh, an interface uh, member in here. So you pop off to the interface and then you can just escape, bring you back to, and you can continue. That's, that's really, really yeah. clever. All right. All right. With that, I'm gonna I'm out of here, buddy. Thank you very much, Mark. And um, I'll join you on your code with stream. Are you streaming tomorrow, I believe? Uh, yes, I'm streaming Excellent. tomorrow. So I guess uh, really recommend Mark's stream. So um, once again, uh, thank you very much, Mark. Thanks so much, buddy. So. Um, I hope uh, I hope that was of interest to uh, those of you who have, uh, have been watching. Uh, if there's any questions um, that you'd like uh, to ask, I'll try and answer anything that I can. Otherwise, I'll, um, I'll compile them and pass them over to Mark. But uh, it's just a very, very kind of brief and whirlwind introduction, really, to um, the Code Rush. And um, I find it quite fascinating. Um, so... Uh, and end this live session. So, uh, so one of the things that um, that we started in this uh, this session was to add clocks to uh, our adventure uh, player. Let's go and have a look at at that. Here we are, the adventure player, and we added this clocks uh, feature. And what this is all about is to um, enable uh, us to start timers when events happen. Uh, within the text adventure and uh, the first kind of instance of that is within um, the room where the dragon is so let's try and find that so that's in game location and it is in the secret north south canyon is it no the northeast canyon uh, yes this is where the wicked dragon lives and um so when you first come across this this dungeon room, uh, Chris Jones, thank you very much for for joining uh, the special stream, and um, it's been good to see you. And um, we'll just try and uh, d just kind of fill up the um, remaining um, few minutes with just uh, looking at these clock this clock feature. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, to Michael Jolly. That's uh, very kind of you. <laughs> Wonderful. So I mean I hope you enjoyed that. I mean it's great having Mark on. It's just a wonderful character, and um, I do really do enjoy his streams and his um, the way they kind of um, they demonstrate all the features of, of of Code Rush on his actual stream, and then you know so we've, we've spotted a few potential issues there, and they go straight back to the to the development team with time references to this um, to this uh, this stream and his stream. So. Uh, yeah, that's really kind of impressive. So, um, yeah, so what I wanted to look at um, just in the remaining time is this try to start to implement this clock feature. This is um, setting up timers, basically. Um, and the first instance where the timer is of interest to us um, is um, in this room, which is the secret northeast canyon, which initially contains this dragon. So you can see that there's... Um, um, an item in here which is a, a dragon and a rug. We go and have a look at the dragon itself. Um, you can see that uh, one of the interactions that we worked on on a stream it was probably last week now was we can kill the dragon and when we do that we replace 
the um, the dragon with a dead dragon. So you can see here that um, we remove we do here remove this, remove the dragon itself from the location, and add a dead dragon instead. Now, um, one of the features of um, of this uh, dead dragon is that it starts to rot, and um, after a certain number of turns, we replace. We're going to want to replace the dead dragon with a rotting dead dragon. Michael Jolly, uh, it was really enjoyed. Um, Mark stream and love uh, getting a chance to actually see the extension in action. Yeah, it was really interesting, wasn't it? So um, there's such a lot to it, which can barely scratch the surface. But I think um, those templates we set up, the, the initial templates for the new dungeon room, um, gives you a lot of food for thought how you can use that feature. And I'll go in and kind of polish up the new dungeon items um, with what we've learned. And I think that's going to be really interesting. So as I say here, we've um, we've added the the um, the dead dragon, and what I want to do is uh, create a new interaction, which is to start a timer or start a clock, um, which will then increment every turn, um, every time someone moves. Um, what's happened here? There we go. I seem to have lost my mouse. My mouse point has disappeared. Where is it going to go to? Oh dear, that's really weird. Oh. I think I just ran out of battery on my mouse. Which is rather bizarre. So could you just hold on a second while I go and get a new battery for my mouse and see if that's the problem. So we'll be right back. Oh, right, sorry about that. I think I've got a mouse pointer back for a while. Um, okay, so where were we? Yes, I was going to say that... Um, oh, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> Typical. So we're going to start a new a, a new timer once we've killed the dragon and just increment it every every time the player moves. So I thought we could quickly do that. So we've added a, a, a clock feature to the player. Uh, it's on the interface as well. So it's... It's a dictionary of string and int, um, and we're going to what we need to do is create a new interaction, which is going to be um, start clock. Um, so let's add a new class to do that. This is going to be start clock. Uh, let's make that public. So let's go and look at the other interactions we've got. Um, so it's going to have to um, implement the I action interface. Let's do that first. 
uh, bring that names namespace in and let's um, actually implement that interface so it's just got a do um, it's just got a do feature to it really a do method um, so let's have a look at what we do in add move so um, we need to create a constructor and this constructor is basically going to um, okay so that add moves is not a good one to use there was a uh, alias command there's there's a decent one to do so yeah okay what we want to do is to have the name of a uh, clock so this is going to be um, a private string so let's use code wish to do that so that's this is going to be um, uh, actually I don't know how to do that bit we want to create a private variable so variable variable string yeah there we go so this is going to be um, clock name so we've learned something um, I want to create a constructor here um, I've created a class never mind so I'm sure I'll learn how to use all this eventually so let's uh, this is going to be start clock so whenever you get a new tool like this it's, there's quite a quite a steep learning curve I think code rush is features are very powerful and I think one of the things that I'm going to have to kind of print out I think is this um, this cheat sheet here because that looks like it's going to be very valuable to me to kind of start to learn the common shortcuts okay so where have we got to uh, yeah so start clock um, we're going to pass in a string of a clock name in there Then we can do that, um, and then we pass in. We do a do. Okay, when you do a do, basically what we're going to do, we need the player. We've we've got a handle on the player here. So on the start clock, we don't really need the item, but passes it in anyway. So um, if Oh, let's try that so if space there it is if player dot clocks dot contains key um, and then it's going to be uh, underscore clock name my typing doesn't improve with time so if it doesn't in include, doesn't already have that key, that clock, then we want to do player dot at clocks dot add, and we want to add, um, we want to add a clock name zero. So what that's basically going to do is to um, oh my my mouse has just gone again. So I'll, there's something a bit weird. With my, so I'll have to use uh, keys. So we're going to return true. Um, so what basically we're doing here is simply adding the clock at um, at zero. So I'm going to be scuppered here because my mouse has decided to give up again. I think it's actually not a battery issue. Let me just try jiggling the battery again. It's a good job this didn't happen while I was on stream with Mark. That would be most embarrassing. OK. 
come on. No, I think I'm I think I'm scuppered, chaps. Um I think I'm going to have to um finish at this point um and try and get my mouse working. Uh, I do apologize uh, about that. Um Okay, so I don't know what I can do here. I'm I'm pretty oh this is this is most annoying. My mouse came back for a while, didn't it? Tell you what, I'll just put you on a B right back. I would like, I don't want to finish on a such a sour note, so I'll go and get another mouse. Hit it hard, yes, I wish I could hit it with a big hammer at the moment. So bear with me for another couple of minutes. There we go. I've hit it hard, but actually, what I've actually done is run upstairs and got another mouse for my work laptop. Okay. Let's see if we can finish this feature off. Okay, so um, when we invoke this uh, this this uh, this interaction, we're going to create a new um, clock and set it to zero. So let's go back now to um, our dragon. And when we say we want to kill the dragon, we want to add this new interaction. So we're going to uh, we're going to replace the dragon there with a dead dragon, and then we're going to create a new interaction. So add to our list of register interactions a new uh, start clock, and we're going to pass in the name of the clock that we want to start which is a dragon clock there okay so what that's what that's going to do is uh when it when we actually um invoke the interaction we do the interact command here it's going to go through and um if it passes this test, which is if we said yes and it's kill, then it's going to invoke all of the interactions one by one in the order we provided. So first it's going to do um, remove this uh, player state kill, it's going to set the congratulation message, it's going to remove the dragon, replace it with the dead dragon, start our clock, um, unblock the room and add uh, the new moves we can do. So we can now go north because the dragon was blocking our way. Um, and so that's actually set up the clock and what we need to do then is actually advance the clock so that's going to happen whenever we do a move so here's the move command and this is one of the base adventure commands so this is different from a uh, an interaction the interactions are kind of they're they're more complicated and they're they're kind of more granular in in and they do very specific things um, to the environment or to items where our base adventure commands are more kind of gross things like to move from location to location or to pick something up or to drop something. Um, so they're kind of more affecting the player, so moving the player around. Uh, though we do have a lock, uh, so a look solid, which is the player looking around. So unlocking and locking is their interactions with items where the commands, they're actually moving the player or affecting the player. So you can see that here, that if we if we can move, 
either that it's not dark and we can't move if it's if it's dark or and we're not encumbered so there's this um is, is our, our, our is our move affected by encumbered status so we so for example if we're carrying um a very heavy load we can't climb up so if we come in and we can move but we're affected by encumbered then we would return at this point we can't move um, so here we advance the move counter so this is where we want to advance any clocks that we've got going as well so um, what we can say here says for each um, for clock in player dot clocks um, clock dot value plus plus. Uh, can we do that? It's read only. Why is it read only? Um, so what we can say is, uh, okay, uh, clock. Uh, so um, dot key is it? That's it. That's better. So we can then say um, each key. Player dot clocks key plus plus me. There we go. So that should advance the clock. Um so we'll just we'll have to test that later because uh, I think it's time. Uh, I'm pushing my luck with this mouse. I think I want to finish. So let's um, just have a quick review of what we've changed to make sure we're not um, committing anything that we don't want to be commit. So start clock. I went to player dragon. Yes, we've changed dragon. We haven't changed dragon tooth. So we can undo those changes. Adventure player we've changed and startup we can undo the changes in startup. So that should be the list of um, things we've done. So let's commit that episode 20. We haven't done an awful lot of code, um, but um, never mind. And we've learned a lot about um, Code Rush. Let's just sync that up to GitHub. Um, and what I want to tell you about, um, I don't know if it's um, a particular interest to, to many people, but what I've been looking at is the Microsoft Bot Framework. And this is um, a framework that Microsoft have produced, which runs up on Azure, to enable you to produce um, chatbots. So not the kind of, I'm not thinking of the kind of bot that um, we use in uh, Twitch chat, but I'm thinking more of... Um, the kind of bot that you interact with perhaps on a website for customer service um, so it's that kind of um, it needn't be an, an AI bot obviously we, we can look at adding uh, artificial intelligence features to it and even speech features um, a bit like uh, Alexa but there is this framework does allow you to actually create um, quite flexible um, chat bots so I thought we'd, um, for the next couple of streams, have a look at that. So I'm going to start that project on Wednesday. I'm not sure how far we'll get on the first thing because um, it's a bit involved, to be perfectly honest with you. So um, we're going to have to do a fair amount of kind of reading of documentation, I think, on the stream. But if I go over to my GitHub, I've actually put up the initial project. So what I did is I... Um, I installed uh, the v6 um, extension which um, enables you basically sets up some project templates and I created an echo bot and I'll show you that on um, Wednesday uh, the echo bot simply ref basically echoes back whatever you say uh, to it 
there's a few kind of um, files being created, but this is purely um, this is purely um, the boilerplate boilerplate code that the um, the V6 template creates for you. So there's, we haven't done any customizations. There's a fair amount of customization to be done if we're going to make something which is useful, because um, this would say just echoes back whatever you type in. Um, so if you're stable, we've to think, no pressure, but if you have time to read the the co-routine thing you wrote, yes, I'll, I'll, I've got that on my list of reading. I enjoyed your other blog post, uh, Fuel Snable, so I'm looking forward to reading that co-routine uh, one. I know you've, um, I saw it tweeted out as well by somebody, so um, you should be getting some hits on that. Um, but I will, I will look at that, don't worry. Um, it's like I say, it's on the list of, of the many things I had to do. I had a very frustrating day at work today. Um, with people asking for features that don't actually do anything, uh, I, I won't. I won't expand on on that. Uh, so yeah. So what we're going to be doing um, from Wednesday is having a look at this this um, this bot framework. Um, it, it looks quite interesting, and we'll eventually publish up onto Azure, and then maybe try and tie it into some kind of um, into some channel. So we've got an emulator which comes with the um, with the project. So we can develop purely um, locally, and then we can look at how we actually set up different channels, like a Slack channel or a um, Skype channel or um, Microsoft Teams or Facebook Messenger, kind of things like that. And what I'm thinking, just to start off, uh, maybe this won't be the ultimate thing, but we'll try and replicate some of the features of the Alexa uh, skill so that you'll be able to ask the bot for information about streams development streams um, and that, that may not be the kind of the ultimate thing we do we may kind of wander away from that and have a question and answer kind of knowledge based bots or do some lan um, natural language processing with it but um, we'll see where it takes us I'm in geek I'm in geek I don't know if you've been with us for the stream or if you just joined us but uh, welcome if uh, if I haven't uh, Said so. It's a bit more difficult when you've got a guest on to um, to interact with um, with with chat. So I did, did try my best to do that. So do appreciate everyone who kind of joined us. And you just joined the running geek. Well, that's good. Speaking of frustration, another real coming at work feels stable. Yes. Well, um, Rambling Geek, um, do catch the uh, the the vod on that um, for this stream because it's um I think it was a quite a special one for me the first time I've I've had a guest on so. Um, I was, uh, I found it quite fun, and um, it actually tested out quite a lot of the technology with the NDI uh, connection with Skype and things like that. We actually had several goes at uh, doing the stream um, over the past couple of weeks, and um, I'm glad it kind of went off without uh, a hitch. Apart from uh, you, you randomly get you just missed the the, uh, the drama that my mouse actually just died. I've had to run upstairs and get um, and get a, a, a corded mouse. Because the batteries on my uh, wireless mouse have just given up. Yes, Phil Snowball Marks was a good guest. He's um, very, very enthusiastic and a very engaging uh, person. He streams the same. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yes, rambling. It, something always happens. I was just so grateful it didn't happen in the middle of the stream when Mark was on, because that would have been terribly embarrassing. Because um, we tested everything else, we made sure that. Skype was working. We made sure OBS was working properly. We made sure that he appeared in the um, on the left hand side in, and and the because he's got a blue screen rather than the green screen. So we set the chroma key up and the the, the masking up and the, the alpha kind of blending that was going on in that. Um, we made sure that um, the kind of audio levels were okay. We had problems initially with, um, with live share. Got that sorted. If my mouse had died in the middle of that, that would have been, you know, just the last straw, really. But I've actually had a quick run rummage through the drawer here, um, where all the batteries are, and we haven't got any batteries that fit the mouse. So I think this mouse is actually officially dead, uh, which is a bit of a shame. So I want to try and you know, nip out and get some batteries for that in the morning. Um, yes, you're stable. He's got a, a blue screen, um, which has all its own kind of. Um, what I found with my green screen, my Elgato green screen, which is behind me at the moment, is that I didn't have to change anything in OBS. It just worked. But with the blue screen, there was a lot of kind of fiddling of um, of the color color settings in the uh, in the filters, which is um, 
interesting to do that over Skype because it, it, they're kind of um, hexadecimal colour numbers and then you have to kind of fiddle with those, lots of sliders to get almost pretty exact numbers to match his setup. Okay, so... Um, well, I really enjoyed, really enjoyed that stream. It's kind of ended a bit abruptly with this mouse going bad. Um, but... Um, I think we've got got to where I wanted to get really um adding this clock feature was just kind of a um a talking point really around what 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 Mark and I were going to discuss we didn't really get that far with it but um this feature's there now and I'll be able to test that at a future stream when we come back to look at um the text adventure I think the text adventure will be a kind of recurring occasional stream to add features to the to the um to the to the game um, I did quite a lot of rooms already, so that, and that's all up on on GitHub. So um, there's a lot more you can do to wander around, but there's there's um, there's still plenty to do, and a lot of kind of um, features which we haven't implemented, like points, um, dying, I haven't got that in there yet, um, and some multi multiplayer kind of features as well. Um, so with that, I'm going to try and find someone to raid. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for um, sticking with the stream, um, even when we kind of went a bit wrong towards the end there. And I hope you did enjoy that. And if you want to see more kind of guests on the stream, do let me know. Um, there's, there was kind of talk of having a, a UK kind of joint stream, um, perhaps with um, with Gareth and looking at us Levin. But uh, I don't know whether we'll get that that kind of that together. But that sounds like an interesting thing to do. Thank you, Michael. That's um, very kind of you to say that. I uh, thank you for the bits. If I didn't kind of thank you before, I do thank you very much for that. Um, let's find someone to raid, shall we? Has anyone got any suggestions before I pick one? Someone they want to they want to see. So let's have a look who's live at the moment. So. I've got Honest Dan Games. Um, how about uh, Source Goose? That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. So let's go and find them. Source Goose. Yes, that's like a good good raid target. So um, if you'd like to stick around for um, the raid on Source Goose, please do. Otherwise. I'll see you on Wednesday at around about um, around about four o'clock in the afternoon UK time. That's three o'clock UTC. Um, it, there's a possibility it may be a bit, little bit later, but I'll tweet out if it's going to change at all. I'm aiming for that time. And as I say, what we're going to do is start a new project looking at the bot framework for Microsoft. So let's initiate this raid and. I'll see you um see you on Wednesday. Thank you all for watching. And thank you for the um the follow. So we're going to raid now.